Hey everybody, section 9-7, we're going to be talking about similarity transformations. This is going to be a lot like section 9-5, where we proved things that were congruent by doing transformations to, to match up figures, to slide them around or rotate or reflect, so that uh, various figures would match up with others, and in that way we'd prove things were congruent, right? We're going to do the same thing in this section, only now we're going to prove things are similar because we will be doing what we call similarity transformations. And again, lining objects on top of each other or lining them up, in which way we're going to prove they're similar. But now, of course, we're getting away from just strictly rigid transformations, and we're going to be involving dilations as well. All right, so here's how it works. We're all about making similar figures and about proving that figures are similar. So every problem we do in this section will involve some sort of a dilation and usually something else as well. So here's a problem. we got triangle DEF, and it's got the vertices shown. How, uh, sorry, what would come out of the image of triangle DEF when we apply this rule? Dilation of 1.5 after a, a, a reflection across the y-axis. Pause if you want to think about it, but here we go with the answer if you don't. Here it comes. I've cheated. I've already created the images that I need here, okay? So, after a reflection across the y-axis, you are going to see this sort of a figure. Here's d prime, e prime, f prime after the reflection. Of course, hopefully by now you see how that works. Every point across the y-axis reflected equally as far. So there's the reflection. Now we're going to follow that up with a dilation by a factor of 1.5. And I didn't want to do that. I do want to do this. So after we do a dilation by a factor of 1.5, every point from the origin moves 1.5 times farther away. So negative 2 becomes negative 3. Uh, negative 4, 2 becomes negative 6, 3. And uh, negative 1, 4 becomes uh, negative 1 and a half, 6. There's our, our, our image after applying this rule. Make sense? That's a trans, uh, uh, similarity transformation in action. Okay, another problem. Think about this one. Pause it if you like. We got another triangle. What's the image after we use this rule this time, okay? Pause, here comes the answer. Once again, I've already created the figures. We're gonna do our translation first. So if we go over 4 and up 2, I believe we are going to end up right here, right? 1, 2, 3, right 4, up 2, and the green image becomes our new, uh, new, 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 new item, all right? Now we're going to apply the dilation by a factor of 0.5, or as before, every figure or every point uh, is going to end up half of the distance from zero that it was. So m from negative six, negative six, will go to negative three, negative, oops, that right? Go back to where I was. Yeah, negative six, negative six. M will go to negative three, negative three. And we got something, oh, duh. Sorry, first thing I'm doing is a transformation, right? We're going to go uh, right four up two. One, two, three, four up two. Sorry. Boy, I just wasted a minute of your life, and that wasn't good. Um, let me start over. Shucks. All right. Green figure. Translation. Right four up two. One, two, three, four up two. There we go. There is our first translation. Right four up two. Now we are going to do the dilation. M goes from negative 2, negative 4. We do that by half. It becomes negative 1, negative 2. Remember, 0, 0 will land at itself. N goes from 2, 4 to 1, 1, 2. And yeah, we end up right about there. So the red figure is our dilation, it is our translation followed by the dilation of 1 half. Okay, hope that made sense. Sorry about the, the, the cross up there. Keeping going. What composition of rigid motions? We'll map RST onto PYZ. Pause. Here comes the answer. It appears that we've got a, a, a nice little 
reflection around the y-axis, or I'm sorry, reflection across the uh, uh, origin, after which we're going to end up right here, correct? Every point following that original rule we used last week, where xy became negative x, negative y, well, so r11 becomes negative 1, negative 1. Uh, 1, 3 becomes negative 1, negative 3, etc., right? So the blue figure here is the one that comes after a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin, right? After that, we're going to do the dilute, dilation by a factor of 2, and every figure, once again, every point, as far as it is away from the origin, right? That one goes down 1 over 3. I'm going to do it again. Or, I'm sorry, down 3 over 1. This one goes down 1 over 3. I'm going to do it again. So every point is equally far. That's one diagonal away. There's a second diagonal away. So every point is twice as far away from uh, the origin as we started. And therefore, we have our uh, similarity transformation that maps RST onto PYZ. Okay? So that's what we would do. A reflection followed by a, a rotation followed by a dilation. Finally, next, what composition of rigid motions would we want to do to map ABCD onto this other guy? Pause. Here we go. Looks to me like I'm going to do a reflection across the y-axis. So I'm going to take that, reflect it across the y-axis. Okay. In order to move it over here, again, there's our reflected image. Now, obviously, we're going to look at it and we're going to see every shape or every position, every point is um, uh, on the red figure. It's half of where it is on the blue figure. Okay. Therefore, we know we did a reflection across the y-axis followed by a dilation of 0.5. Okay. Next, give you the definitions. These are all similarity transformations. Okay. They all have the same shape, different sizes, compositions of rigid motions together with dilations turn pre-images into similar images. In fact, the key idea of this section is two items are similar, figures are similar, if and only if there is some sort of a similarity transformation that turns one into the other. Okay? All right, so is there a similarity transformation that's going to turn JKL into RST? Pause. Here comes your answer. Oh, of course there is. Okay? We're going to take this. I'm going to turn it. Do a, do a, uh, a rotation. I'm going to slide it over. It's, uh, I'm going to make it bigger first. How about we do that? Maybe about like that. Then slide it over. And they pretty much just line up about perfectly. Okay? Therefore, by dilating, uh, after we do the rotation, then doing a translation, we're going to find out those two figures are similar. Here's our similarity statement. And we have proven those two figures were similar. Now be a little bit careful, because how about in this case? Well, the pictures may look like it, but we gave you the numbers for a reason. Notice, the numbers tell us they're not proportional. If I compare the smaller sides, that is uh, the smallest side, 10 compared to 12, check. Middle side, 12 compared to 16, check. Biggest side, 16 compared to 20, check. Notice none of those sides actually simplify to the same fraction. Sides aren't proportional. They're not similar in the first place. Okay? Now, are these figures similar? Explain. Yeah, I think so. All i got to do is do this guy. Make it flip. Okay, i got to tighten it up a little bit because we're a little bit... Uh, the screen causes it to change a little bit. And then we do a dilation, and sure enough, we can line up those two figures right on top of each other. They are similar figures. Hope that's good for you. Talk to you all later.